Oh no, listen to the noise. Can these shears be fixed? And the noise is only half the problem. I don't know. Follow along with me. Let's see if these shears can be saved. So I'm bringing these shears to my sharpening bench and the noise is just one of the many problems. Let's go through and look at what's going on with these shears. These were sent to me by a sharpener who he did not sharpen. He, they were given to him. Another sharpener had sharpened these. It has a multitude of problems and he decided to walk away from them, which is what I would advise. Just sell them a new pair when you come across something like this. But for the fun of it, let's you and I see if we can salvage these shears. I've looked them up on the internet and that's where I start out. And these are going to sell anywhere from $150 to $200, um, basically on the internet. It's a Joel. This Joel looks like it's an older model. The bumper has definitely been changed. It's not the original bumper. The first thing I notice is that the tips actually have a gap between them. This may be why the bumper was changed. He still has not brought the tips together. Another thing I see here, we have a ride line coming up the back as well as on the edge. And the ride line actually looks better here. Let's flip it over and see if we have the same issue going. Yes, can you see that reflection? See that reflection right there? That means that whoever sharpened it probably either had the wrong positioning of their hands when they were doing the inside work or they didn't bother to take them apart. And so they were doing their pressure here rather than the pressure at the pivot. Do you see this crisp ledge here? Now when I see that, there's a good chance these are cast shears, which means I can't bend them. If the blades are out of alignment, I am not going to be able to fix them by bending or hammering because it's going to break. If I bring my magnet and I'm touching it to the handle, it, it pulls good pulls the same on the blade. There's the same magnetic pull for the handle and the blade. A lot of times you'll be able to see the shears. It'll be like a little um, weld mark where the handle and the blade are welded together. I'm not seeing that on these shears at all. I'm not going to take any chances in trying to bend the handle or the blade or anything here because they're going to go ping and snap on me. Let's see how these shears cut. Huh, nothing. But basically you've got a a shear that doesn't cut. Anything we do is going to improve those. So let's go ahead and take a chance on them. So now I'm going to check the alignment. I've got my alignment bar here. Yeah, I've got a gap in the middle. Can you see the light between the blade and the bar? And then I squeeze and that light should disappear. but there's still light in the middle. The alignment is off not because of dropping, not because the blades have been bent. The alignment is off strictly because of the sharpening. Because you see how we dip down here and you've sharpened more and more and more, so it, it changes that whole geometry of the shear. And that's what puts your alignment off, especially since they've taken off metal back here in the back. The other thing about it is that because it's a cast shear, it's not likely to have bent and warped out of shape, maybe taking too big a chunks of hair. Whoever sharpened it put a bevel on it. We're going to see what the angle is. So my goal is, is to take that bevel out or at least blend it out. I'm probably going to have to shorten it because it's so um, pointy here. And I'm working on getting that shape. Can you see? That's the shape right there that I'm wanting to recreate, not this flat bevel that you see here. So unlike sharpening like a regular shear um, with normal sharpening, I'm going to work on reshaping this first. So I'm going to set my clamp at 40. Oh, it's already set at 40. And I definitely want a cushion plate for this. Here's a 500 grit. I'm going to stay with a 40 because 
that may be all that this shear is going to be able to take. I might not be able to bring it all the way up to a 45 degree angle. So I'm going to turn my machine on. Water is not always a high priority with me, but I'm going to be taking off a lot of metal and I'm going to be going pretty fast, so I want to keep it fairly cool. I'm going to turn this off a second so you can see where I'm landing in here. I want to land where that is right there. That little area where I said I want where I want to reshape it, when I land, I want to kind of land where not all the way back here, not at the edge. I want to kind of land where that is. That's what I want to work on. And that'll help get that hump out of here. And I'm not doing a lot of rocking at this point. Maybe just a little bit of rotating it toward the edge. It's getting hot. And I'm actually starting to get some of that convex shape here, not back there. And you can see where the red hasn't been removed. Let's put a little water on here. My tip's turning dark. You see that? I told you I'd have to shorten it. Look at it smoking. But I'm getting that convex shape. Just a little bit more right there and I'll have that. And I have not yet rolled all the way to my stop. I like that. I'm going to switch to the other one. I really don't have a burr yet. I'm not working on a burr. I'm working on reconvexing. Warm. I'm lining up the angle this way with this section. And I'm not worrying about doing too much rocking to the edge because I'm working on getting that bevel out. So I don't have a burr at this point because I'm not trying to get a burr. What I'm trying to do is get that convex shape and I pretty well have it. Do you see that? And so now I'm going to think about what I want to do on the inside and how I'm going to work this ride line in such a way that I can um, correct the alignment on it. So let's kind of examine the ride line on here. Wipe this off a little bit. I'm looking, and it's really wide here, narrow, and then maybe wide again, and almost non-existent right here. And I'm not sure if, I don't think the last sharpener did anything down in here. In order to fix the alignment and in order to correct the ride line, I'm going to need to work this area. Let me explain that to you. And let, I'm going to just color this, draw this in so you can see, kind of visualize with me. Alright, so here's my blade. And, see, so if I took off extra here, I could get an extra wide rod line and that would kind of bring this down. But bringing this, taking more metal off here, do you see how if this, this is raised, if I take more metal off here, this is going to bring it down here. That's my theory. So we're hoping this will work and fix. This is the Kitayama stone. Let's see where we are beginning. And y'all stay with me because we're going to discover together whether we're going to make these work or not. All right, I see light when I press like the whole blade. Um, it's, it's just really off here. So let's work this in the corner. I have the red Sharpie all the way around it. Working this area. And 
then I'm going to pull it all the way through. Now this is a thousand grit. My pressure is still here even though I'm pulling the whole blade across here. And this is probably, we may need to wipe out the tip a little bit. What I mean wipe out is a wider ride line at the tip, but see I'm not even hitting the tip here. But it's still coming off the back, which is not pleasing me. It would be so nice if we could just bend these shears. And, or maybe do like a little twist where the edge comes closer together. The red's coming off the back here and I don't have the tip. Now this may be one of the, this may be one of those that's not going to make it. Anybody's got their fingers crossed or praying over these shears? <laughs> I think this sharpener is going to be able to sell this lady a new pair of shears. Remember, the person that sent them to me is not the person that sharpened him. It was a sharpener that realized this was beyond their training level. And it's really not worth the time and effort. Still not getting the ride to the tip, but these are so pointy I may be taking that tip off anyway. Let's go on to the 4,000 grit side. Still working that area up there. And I know you can't see my face, but I'm kind of gritting my teeth, making awful faces. You probably don't want to see what I look like at this point, because this is really not happy sharpening. But, I did take the red off to the tip. I still got a little red on the back. It should be red all the way down here and back here. So let's pretend like we have the ride lines okay. This may be as good as they're going to get. Now we're going to go to pretend like we just created that first step, the ride line, and we're going to go to our machine and sharpen. So I have my clamp set at 40. 45 would probably be the optimal angle for these shears, but a lower angle will cover up some sins on these. So I have this set. I have it where it'll rock. I have a worn 800. Now you see I have a lot of swarf and metal build up in here. I'm going to show you how to clean this off. This is called a swarf eraser. I'm going to go a little bit faster. And we sell these, and this cleans this up pretty nice. If you use a little water on it, it cleans up even better. However, if you use alcohol on it, and I don't recommend this very often because it's not good to breathe alcohol, but this will clean up even nicer with alcohol. And you could use your microfiber cloth it's pretty nice, huh? I still got a little bit in here, but I think this will work better for us. Now, it's better to work with your back blade first and then your front blade second. This shear goes this way, so that's my front blade. This is my back blade. I'm using more water than I normally would because I discovered that I think they were overheated by the last sharpener. And so they are heating up pretty quick. I'm not liking the way that looks. I'm not liking the way a lot of this is looking, you know? I didn't like the way these shears looked when they came into me. This may be some that's going to be good enough. It's going to be good enough. Now I can look at it until I don't have a burr at the tip. I don't have a burr all the way down anywhere. I might have to go to a fresh 800. Oh, burr starting right here in the center where it's typically that's where it starts. I don't have it at the tip, 
and I don't have it back here. I'm pressing back here, pressing toward the tip. You see how I'm feeling with this left hand? These are my more sensitive fingers. I got the tip. I still... Yep, yep, yeah, I do. Yes, I have a burr all the way down. So now I want to remove my burr on my stone. And I'm using the 4000 grit side. Turn it around to this clean side here. Put my pressure down, pressure here. Maybe a little bit extra pressure here than I normally would just because I know it's a little bit out of alignment. Still got burr here. Still feel a little bit of burr, which doesn't surprise me because of the alignment issue, but when we finish it, it should cut off. If not, I have some suggestions on that too. Press here, light there. I have my polishing pad on. I'm using a felt pad. I'm using a one micron diamond spray and then the white um, polish with it. I'm going to set my clamp. See it's at 40. When I turn the inset in the detente, I'm moving it up to like 40, maybe about 44. So that means I can polish it, get close enough to remove any outside burrs, but not roll over my edge. And that's especially true, that's especially true if you're using a felt pad or something that has a little bit of soft or give to it. Once again, you want to start with your back blade. And I go as fast as I'm comfortable. I'm actually going to turn this up to, it's not full maximum, it's about 75%. And I'm rolling over more of the blade to get a lot of the polish over it. And I just walk back and forth. And this is more cosmetic, also removing the burr than anything else. See some of the polish melting here from the friction? I didn't get out all the scratches, but it, that's looking pretty good. If it cuts, no stylus is going to worry about some scratches left in there. I'm not trying to make these into new shears. I'm just trying to get these where they're serviceable. It's pretty nice. So I've cleaned my shears. I put the screw back in, made sure I put it in correctly, and I did it with the shears open. I don't want to close them. I want to do the first close on a paper towel. Sometimes I'll just use double tissue, like I've got some here. Um, but on these, I, I already suspect there's some burr left behind inside, and I want to cut that off if possible. I'm not testing them, so I do want to use a little side pressure. I do want to use a little um, more strength than I normally would. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm cutting once, and then maybe one more. And you'll feel a difference. You'll feel it snap off, and you'll feel it smooth. So now, here's the proof. Remember how they cut dry tissue before. Let's see how they cut now. Eh, not perfect. Now I can make them cut with a little extra, but soft, no. Uh, the tip does. So if they're just cutting from the tip down, they're going to be okay. Now let me show you one of my tricks. The nail buffer. I'm going to go over the outside in case there's any residual burrs left behind. And that's what this test tells you, is if, if there's any roughness or any burrs. <sighs> look, look what a stupid thing I did. I turned it the wrong way. Looking at the video. Hope I didn't mess up the shears with that. 
Try not to use the wrong side. This is 3,000 grit. That was 320. Ugh. Did you hear the sound too when I did it? <laughs> hey, you're coming right along with me. And you're, you'll also will see that you can make mistakes and still make things work. Hopefully. We'll find out. Have to wait to the end along with me to find out. Okay, let's see if that cuts the dry any better. Not really. I think I might have messed it up with that 420 grit. Well, it's cutting from the middle down. Let's see what the wet will do. Now, if these are, if this um, hairstylist is a point cutter, then we may be okay. So, if they're just cutting with the center down, it cuts good. You see that? Center down is cutting well. Even pulling my thumb out. But if I try to go all the way the whole blade, it's not. And that's because of the alignment issue. But it's not too terrible, is it? Let's see what it actually does on hair. Sometimes all you can say is I've improved these 100%. So here's a little piece of hair that I use for testing. Now, we're going to shorten that tip, and we're going to do something with that. That'll be another video. So I'm not too worried if that tip is pulling a little bit. I'm wanting to see how well this cuts from the center down. And that's not bad. So the back pushes, but when you get here, it's cutting. And most hairstylists really only cut from here to here. So these may be ones we give back and tell them, hey, they're 100% better. So we went through a lot of work to make these work from the, from the tip down, but not on the back area. Plus, now we need to shorten them because of the, that's dangerous right there. So that's the finish here. After I shorten it, this will be ready to give back to the sharpener to give to the customer and see whether um, they can use this as their backup shear. Oh, what about the sound? That was the first problem we saw with it. Okay, quiet, listen. No sound. I'm going to talk over it so you know there's no fake in it. There's no sound. So I've got them quiet. They're cutting from here down. They're not cutting here. This is when you get back to the customer. You tell them, I've improved these 100%. I've got them quiet again. They're smooth. They cut really nice from the center down, but they're not back to like a new shear, and you can't get them back to a new shear. So you may want to make these your backup shears and buy you a new pair. And I just happen to have some here with me. And then you spread out your shears and you show them what you have. Do you like watching my videos? I like making them. Please comment, subscribe, like, and hit the little bell for notifications when we have new videos come out.